Hello and welcome to Office Hours here at the Professor's Kitchen where I sit down in my office and we have our cool immersive kitchen background today. So it makes me, I'm in my office, but I'm in the kitchen. And so my office is the kitchen today. I think it's awesome. <laughs> and I am so honored and privileged to have our wonderful guest here today, Selena Kamaki, and she is going to tell us all about herself and all about her creative endeavors and her professional life and just how awesome she actually is. She's going to talk. You're going to brag about yourself. That's what you're going to do right now. Are you ready? Are you ready? I to think so. Right I think so. I'm like the worst person to talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little bit of background um, about you. Like where, where did you start this whole journey? Because I know you from a lot of the military spouse pages. Yes. But of course, none of us come into this life as military spouses. We weren't born military spouses. So right. how did, how did this all start for you? So, you know, of course, um, I, I met my military army soldier uh, when he came to my hometown in Hawaii and it wasn't something that I had expected. It was, um, you know, I had been a single parent for about a year. We, you know, was divorced and I was like, okay, you know, you think about these things like, okay, what do I want for my next relationship? Right. Mm -hmm. And I had said firmly, no military, no first responders. <laughs> And that's the total opposite. That is the total yes. opposite of what I said in grad school. I was like so over the whole dating scene yeah. in, in grad school, which, you know, it's like 25 years old or something. I'm so over this. I want a guy with some good benefits. <laughs> I want a first response I a love police it. officer, somebody with a pension. <laughs> Careful you're, what you so, for, right? <laughs> you're so much smarter than I was. I, didn't even, I couldn't even think that level. I was like, uh, you know, now in my age, I won't say how old, but yeah. Um, but no, yeah. And, and that's kind of how the journey started with like me leaving my home was it, it, eight years ago we met. And if anybody is in the military community, we like fall in love fast and hard and things move a lot quicker than they normally would yeah. um, in the real civilian world. So we got married and I, I, I left Hawaii for uh, the middle of Louisiana. Wow. Yeah. That so a huge change. It was, it was. And, you know, my career prior to doing what I currently do was I was, I, I was 20 plus years in uh, the restaurant industry working for like a big corporate chain restaurant and had worked my way up from like a hostess to like, you know, the director of sales and marketing by the time I walked out the door. Um, Incredible. You know, and, yeah. So, you know, you love somebody when you leave a career, you worked really long and hard for Yeah. Um, to kind of, you know, so it was, yeah, we, 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 we left Hawaii and my husband was like, you don't really have to work. And I, I think it's just in my DNA. Yeah, I know. I know. Right. It was like a dream. I was like, yes, I've been working <laughs> <laughs> since I was 16. I want a little bit of a break, but, um, no, we, yeah, we went and it's just in my DNA. I don't know how to not work. And so, yeah. um, but I, I did know that I did not want to continue the, the same career I was doing because where we were was so different from home. Right. And it was kind of like this, like reinventing of yourself, right. When you are like, what do I want to do? Yeah. And I think a lot of us in our, our community, we call it accidental entrepreneurship, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> So, um, it was all these like little skills that I had done for myself that became something that I could actually turn into a business and provide clients. And so it started off with, uh, yeah, social media management for a colleague back in Hawaii in the middle of Louisiana and <laughs> turned into like, you know, I, I, I was a mommy blogger and I started writing for military, you know, blogs. And I was like, Oh, I can build a website because I had to house one. So yeah, I, it's all these skill sets that kind of like turned me into now this like WordPress website designer and digital strategist. And so here we are. It's so weird, but Yay. Uh, that yeah, so cool. that's yeah, such yeah, a cool yeah. journey. So where yeah. education wise, then do you yeah. have a, a degree in something very specific and how does that work into yeah. what you're doing now? If life could give me one, I would have like 
doctorates in it, but <laughs> um, no, I, you know, I, I have my high school diploma from Hawaii and then I did, I did go to the college, but I, I didn't know what I wanted. Like I, you know, so I was just mm. doing that liberal arts thing. And mm. um, so I don't have, I don't have a college degree, but um, the reason for that is because I had made a choice as I was given an opportunity in the restaurant that I worked at that said, hey, we see potential and we want to advance you into our manager program. Yeah. And I was like 21 and I was like, what? Like me? <laughs> and, um, you know, I just made a choice at that time because I, I didn't know what I wanted to do anyway. And so mm-hmm. I thought I was, I was going to college just to kind of do the the, the, the classes you need. Right. Um, but it's always been on the back of my mind that I, I, I feel it's important just to have something. Right. And I, I have a daughter now and I, it's, I just want her to say like, Hey, like, um, you know, I mean, yes, we talked to a lot of people and they're always like, I don't use this, but I do this. And you're like, I know, but it just shows that you've worked hard for something. Right. And it's, Good guy. I, I, yeah. So those are my only, that my only official call it or school degree Larice is a high school diploma from the middle of the uh, Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I mean, if you have to get a high school diploma from somewhere, that sounds like one of the coolest places to get it, it right? It was, it was, it was. I, I love, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm part Hawaiian, so it's just like, you know, I, I love, I love that. I don't know. I, that will be my little piece of me, I guess. That's my little stamp. Right. So <laughs> that's, that's the coolest stamp. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that, um, because I teach at the community college level, I definitely see a lot of students come in who are like, I'm just here. Cause I feel like I have to be here and yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going with this. Right. And so I like to think that I help them a little bit. Um, but sometimes I really like to tell them, you don't have to do this. This is not like mandatory. There are lots of other things that you could do besides getting this degree because it's yeah. really it's really not for everyone. It really isn't. And I wish that people would stress that more and yeah. say like, you could have a certificate in something. You can just study this thing for, for free and, and practice really hard and get it. And yeah, there are plenty of jobs out there that want you to have an associate's or a bachelor's, but Mm -hmm. you're going to be an entrepreneur. Who's asking you for a degree? Like (laughs) no one's going to ask you if you have this incredible portfolio of work and you've Mm -hmm. built your own website and you've built your own, like you can showcase your work. The degree is more of icing on the cake than it is the cake, right? Right. You're, you're, you have, you have the cake. (laughs) Yeah. They're like, oh, you did, you did that too. Like you also went to school and you have this, you know, um, my, uh, my baby sister, she baby sister, she's like in her thirties. Right. But you know, she (laughs) has your baby sister. I know. I know she's um she's got a degree in psychology and she's a practicing like you know she's getting like she's doing that part where she's becoming licensed and so um you know I joke with her I said you know you're the only one right now that has gone to college and has gotten a degree <laughs> degree Aww. right um, yeah. um but it is it's super interesting though to watch our two different paths and I think like you just said it's not right or wrong which path mm-hmm. you choose and I think it's just the hard work you put into your life Absolutely. Um, right. And what you want from it. And don't get me wrong. I feel like there could be me, like, I'll be 60 and I'm going to be like, I think I want to go to college. Yeah. I think I want to, I want to attend and I want to sit down with these young 18 year olds and I want to get a degree just because <laughs> you know? that happens so often. And I think that's one of the, the privileges of working at a community college is that I can't say that all of my students are, you know, freshmen in the traditional yeah. sense they're not yeah. yet all 18 or 19 years old yeah there have been plenty of times when we talked about briefly before I started recording we talked about imposter syndrome I was yes. like 26 27 years old I think when I started teaching in college and I had students that were in their 50s 60s they had kids my age and they were like what who what what is going on? Why are you teaching my class? Um, but those were the same students that at the end of the class, they were like, I really got something out of this class. Yeah. I didn't think that I would, but um, you know your stuff. And I really yeah. got something out of this class, but they were the most interesting people. Like I loved listening to them and all of yeah. their life experience. And, mm-hmm. you know, whether it was a working mom who, you know, stopped working when she had kids, 
and just stayed at home with them until and many of them were in college at the same time as their kids. Um, that was fascinating to me. I'm like, yes. what, what did you, how did you fill all of that time? Like, please tell me, like, how did you yeah. fill all that time? That sounds right. incredible. Yeah. Um, or like military, you know, a lot of people had, they went to the military right out of high school and they had this entire career before they decided to get out or but before they decided that they needed to get out or they were medically discharged or whatever. And then they're sitting in my classroom and they have all these stories to tell and they've been all these different places yes. and, you know, seen things that the average person has never seen. And so, yeah, there's so uh, many different paths and so much um, experience that you can get without yes. seeing in the classroom. Um, and if you don't start until later in life, then you don't start until later in life. And it's right. totally fine. And you're so, a much, you're a much more interesting yeah. student. I love reading yeah. those papers. Yes. <laughs> Cause I can, I bet I know. And you're the kind of like professor, teacher, like educator that like, that like feeds my soul. Like when I come in, I feel like there's like this purpose now, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, of like, okay. Cause I can remember all of the classes I took, like, you know, I, and I, I want to say like, I did two to four years. You would think in that time I would have got like my associates, but <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do things right, you know, and I want to, I do want to knock myself a little bit because I'm like, oh, you kind of just had something, right? Because yeah. I will be honest, there is like, anytime I fill out something, right? Even though I've like accomplished, like I've, I've made my six figures, like, you know what right. I mean? Like, and, but I still feel like um, when I fill things out and it says your education, I can only click high school. I almost feel like there's a sense of like, not a, I haven't a comp I don't know I don't know there's just this feeling of like oh I wish I could click at least this you know I can only do the some college right but I can't do right. associates or something like that but um yeah. but it is it's it's funny how that plays into your mind a little bit right of, of it does yeah if yeah. you let it I think if you let it it definitely gets gets to you um yeah. it gets to me too and I I do have a master's degree but right. when I go to look at I don't I'm not 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 saying I'm applying anywhere or anything. I would never say that. Um, no. <laughs> but when I look at jobs and you know in in my field, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm immediately disqualified because I don't have a PhD. Yeah, and so wild. It feels you know it it feels yeah. weird to look at that job and be like, well, I mean, I can totally like this is what I do. Yeah, I've been doing it for ten years now. And mm -hmm. I'm still not good enough to, you know, it's, yeah, that's, that's the feeling is like, I'm still not good enough to work yeah. here or to do this job because I don't have that degree <sighs> yet. Um, and I, feel, I know the feeling. I really do. I, it, yeah. it doesn't seem whatever level you're at. I think there's yeah. some degree of that where you just don't feel like you're good enough. Right, right, right. That thing, or that you missed out on something that you probably should have. In retrospect, you should have yeah. done that thing. Yeah, I probably should have gone straight through and gotten a PhD so that I'm not, I don't feel like that now. Right. But it, but maybe there would have been one more thing, right. That you would right. have been like, maybe I, yeah. Right. Cause, right. Cause yeah. what an accomplishment for you though. Like a master's just is like, st that's a lot of like learning and dedication to wanting to, to be a, a master of that yeah. craft. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. It didn't feel like that at the time. And I definitely haven't made six figures from it yet, but, um, I probably spent six figures. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Three, which does not feel like balance to me at all. Like right. it's backwards, right? Like, like wait a minute. I'm yeah. still paying off student loans. Oh, I've been man. doing this for how long now? Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. I did this the wrong way. I, yeah. and I look at, um, I started out and, and I, I don't know, um, people who know me know that I started out paying for my master's degree by working at a hair salon. And so I did a lot of the, the retail, you know, yeah. all day, every day, nine hour shifts and stuff. And then trying to go to school at night to put myself through, through grad school. And that was just, I, I, I looked at, but the stylists were making mm -hmm. six figures already, right. you right. know, and they hadn't spent nearly as much time in school, but Mm -hmm. They knew what they wanted to do. They were super yeah. driven. They were super focused. They knew that if they wanted to go back to school later on, 
they yeah. had six figure salaries that they could, you know, pay out of pocket yeah. for that degree. Yeah. Um, and so I felt like a lot of them did it the right way. They were super happy in their careers. They mm-hmm. were making really good money. They had, you know, their own homes. They, you know, and in Chicago, yeah. like you had, yeah. wow. you know, they, they had, um, you know, a condo downtown Chicago and a fancy car and, you know, all this stuff all the in Chicago. All the oh, yes. Um, and so I was like, oh no, I did this wrong. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, no. Oh no. no. Oh no. This is no. a bad idea. <laughs> um, and then they can still, you know, if the, the, the education thing didn't pan out and yeah. they didn't like that or didn't know what they were going to do next, they still had mm-hmm. this career. They still had yeah. clients and they could, you know, work from home if they wanted to, or go out to different locations, Yes, style celebrity hair on location somewhere and all this stuff. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I I see that it's, uh, you know, um, in the restaurant business, like obviously a lot of my team were, they're college students. And so Mm -hmm. in the 20 years that I did, and we are also connected because of the Facebook and the Instagram, (laughs) but it's so cool to kind of see them now. Like, you know, they're not my like, they're not my young kids, but they're Mm -hmm. like these adults that have like evolved. And, you know, and some of us will chat, like, did that degree ever pan out? And it's awesome to see some that like really like the dedication that they put, Mm -hmm. uh, it did, but you know, we laugh like, I remember when you were serving pasta to a table, like, (laughs) you know, like, because you just got to get through the college, you got to make the money to to have dinner or just right. like you said, you're working to pay the bills too, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it was, it was tough. And like I said, yeah. in a, a big city like that too, where everything is just naturally more expensive and um, harder to get your foot in the door sometimes. I mean, yeah. having, having that job was huge, like right. really, really big, but I was also looking up to the other big yeah, kids yeah. that you know yeah. like oh man you guys really I right. wish I knew <laughs> <laughs> right. I wish I knew I wish I'd done this a little bit yeah the way right right right, Next right. lifetime no <laughs> right Next or you never lifetime. know you'll be like hey maybe I'm going to I'm going to stop what I'm doing now and I want to open up my own salon because you know what you, I you can know, do I mean, it yes I mean, right now I have the experience I could do right. it um, right right but yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. And yeah. now every time I walk into the salon and get my hair done, I'm like, so what, uh, what software are you using back there uh, to schedule my appointment? <laughs> They're like, oh, that, that is so funny. No, every time I eat, I sometimes I don't enjoy going to restaurants for that same reason is because I'm so, and, and I'm the nicest person, but I'm critical in the sense of, because I have to, you know, when you walk in as a manager, you're constantly like, checking corners, mm-hmm. seeing what that staff member is doing, hiding in the corner. Um, is the kitchen food coming out? Is the, is the software system working? Right. So all the checks are being printed. <laughs> like I can't enjoy my dinner sometimes, yes. you know? So yeah, yeah. Uh, there's always a peak of interest when you walk into a place just to be like, I know mm-hmm. how you run your place. I do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Thank goodness you weren't like in um, what is it like food services or like the food inspector or something like that? Oh my that gosh. Be, oh, you know, I, horror stories there. Yeah, yeah no. And, and being in the restaurant, like I've had to be the manager on duty that like has to receive that food inspector that does the, the whole thing around. Right. And you're mm-hmm. just like, you just made me sweat thinking about it, you know, like, <laughs> right. but yeah, I couldn't imagine being them and the stories that they have. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I checked I, in living in Chicago. I definitely would check the list. Like every, every time it came out, I was like, who made the list this time? Won't be going there. Going I'm there. Sure you need to clean that up. Uh, that's Let's so not funny. do that. Okay. Yeah. Little, no. little obsessive like that. <laughs> um, but besides, so you, besides the, the challenges that we've mentioned already of obviously like not, not having a degree can be a bit of a challenge. Sometimes it can be a barrier to entry for, um, if you're not an entrepreneur, obviously you're not checking your own resume to see like, Oh, I, I didn't get a college degree. I guess I can't work today. <laughs> you know? right. Um, and, and the military moving it around all the time, what other challenge, big challenges would you say that you've faced in the career that you have now that you've created for yourself? You, I, I think, yeah, you, I think, it's so funny. Uh, when somebody asked me that question about a challenge, 
I think I've created, um, I've created a, a model for myself that has allowed me to see them as opportunities. And I, I look at stuff. I, so because I run my own business and I have contract workers that come in to help me run that business, I, um, I recognize that like the challenges for me are of the running the back scenes of a business. Yeah. Um, I realized that I am not good with bookkeeping. I'm not good with, um, taxes, you know, in yeah. April. And so when I, um, I met with somebody in actually our military community, that was a CPA. And I was like, okay, I realized that I need to outsource certain things so that the challenge that I was facing become something that helps me propel forward. And, and that was part of actually being able to reach the six figures is, is honestly outsourcing the challenges, but the challenges for me, like it was, it was knowing what I was not good at in my own business. Um, and I think we all strive to do things ourselves because we're, you know, we're a one woman show, right? Like, so, um, and you don't always have the funds to, to do all these things. You have to work with these clients. So you're, you're crying the first year when you have no sleep and you're like, wait a minute, I have to do taxes. And, um, but there were just other things. So the challenges I think that I faced personally was knowing that I was not good at the financial part of my business. Mm -hmm. Um, I was good at bringing money in, but I was not good at the part of like, look, like what were, what all of my expenses were. And I might, I know I still have money in the account, but could I have been doing better? Right. Right. And so bringing a CPA in helped me look at monthly, like regularly Mm -hmm. um, things. And and then another challenge was just kind of, um, I know this is so weird, but just feeling lonely kind of when you run your own business and not having like a colleague to kind of say, man, this was stressful today with the client or, this was, I mean, we can all go sit with our husbands or our spouses, you know, in, in the bed, but you know, at the end of the day, you want somebody that kind of understands without having to right. read up the backstory. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, th- those things, um, those are my hardest ones, like challenges for what I do now. Um, yeah. cause I, yeah, I do. I, I tell you, I, I'm not a, I'm an opportunity. I'm an opportunist, but in the good way, like meaning I see an opportunity when a challenge is presented to me and I want to make it not a challenge. Um, so that's kind of what I, I think that's why I can't give you a really solid (laughs) challenge that I face. That's a big challenge. I mean, I, I jokingly say this all the time that, you know, I went into English because I'm so bad at math. Um, (laughs) because no, you would never, never want tutor a, a, a small child in math. Okay. Like yes. I'm yes. going to take much longer to figure out that problem than <laughs> anyone else. Um, but I think, you know, if you're, if you're not outsourcing stuff that you just know that you cannot do, that's like a huge, the yeah. challenge I think is just identifying your weaknesses and asking for help. Yeah. Um, and that, that is a, a big thing for me too. I, um, when I was working at the salon, I moved up from working at the front desk to um, being a business administrator. And so I was working in the back office and doing payroll and, wow. you know, yeah. accounts payable, accounts receivable. I was like, who decided that I was any good at this? <laughs> said I, I was like, um, excuse me, excuse me. I don't know what I'm authorized doing. me. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. I don't know what I'm doing. Hello. No, I can't. <laughs> Can, some, can someone send me to a class? Uh, right. And they were like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can, we can do that. Yeah, we should right. send you to a class. And so they, they did. And it was, I literally found a class that was called finance for non-financial people. And I was like, see, that's, that's the class for that's, me. Yes. <laughs> for sure. That's the class for me. And it wasn't like I was, I didn't come out of the, the you know, three-day class or whatever. Yeah. Um, with any sort of major knowledge and, and experience or anything like that, I, I wouldn't have trusted myself to do taxes for the company. Right. Um, but it gave me enough to be able to say like, work QuickBooks, work Excel. I would sit down in the office with the accountant and go over everything yeah. and have him to you know explain it to me. Yeah. Explain it to me like I'm an idiot because I'm kind <laughs> right, of an idiot when it comes to this kind of that stuff. That is how I tell people to talk to me too because I yeah. need it like that sometimes. Where's oh, the man. dummies book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
and then, and then when I, you know, then you, when it clicks and you got it, yeah. then you're good to go. But yeah, initially like, hello, hi, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm stupid. Can you, <laughs> can you please explain this to me? Cause it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that, I think that's a real challenge, you know, mm-hmm. and a lot of people I think struggle for a really long time before they're willing to ask for that kind of help, whether it's, yeah. um, you know, lots of people, I think financially for sure, um, mm-hmm. or, you know, mental health, yep. you know, as, as a military spouse, like you said, not only can your job be lonely, but like your life can get kind of lonely sometimes. Yeah. Um, and if you're a parent and you're single parenting for a little while, while your spouse is off TDY or, you know, yes. deployed somewhere or whatever, life gets lonely. And so mm-hmm. fortunately we have communities of military spouses where we can get yeah. together and share ideas. And like you said, people with other experiences, like you run into a CPA and it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, life changing. Let's, let's check. Yeah. I buy you a coffee, you know, let's mm-hmm. go, let's go sit down and have a coffee together. And now you've like, you made a friend and you've made yeah. uh, a business contact. Yeah. Um, and it just makes life so much easier, so much better. And, uh, a little less lonely. Yes. Yeah. No, a little, a little so, less lonely. Yeah. So I do. I encourage just to reach out. Like Larice just said, reach out and join these communities. So you can like find different ways to do things to yeah. get you out of the challenges that you're running in your business. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you find, you find your people, you know, when you're, mm-hmm. um, I know when I was like a, a new military spouse and I didn't have any kids, I had to find my people, who right. did, which is hard sometimes uh, in the military community. Lots of kids. Yes. Um, and yes. Then after I had my my first kid, uh, it was you know finding a group of of mommies yeah. that all had you know newborns or young uh, little ones, uh, and you find you find your new little tribe of people, and you're like, yeah, these are my people. We had a crunchy right. group. We had a crunchy group going in, in Korea, Aww. and we were all you know. Oh, yeah. have, oh, you ran out of snacks? I have some <laughs> organic chips of, you know, I love that. Chips that <laughs> yes, 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 you're my people. Yes. So I found out that this one has GMOs in it, so I stopped <laughs> using it. <laughs> like, oh. No, I know. That's, no, I love, I, like, I love, the, but that's, those are those, those are the communities that you're like, <sighs> you know, it just allows you to breathe a little bit, you know, um, yeah. especially like for us as military spouses and that military life. And it is, it is interesting having kids kind of helps you get in a, com- like, a, within the community, like, you know, it there's does. this commonality, right. But when you don't have a kid, it's almost like, I don't even know how to introduce myself to you. Like, cause no. I'm not saying, oh, I'm Maddie's mom. Right. right? It's like, <laughs> I'm Selena. Yeah. And I don't know how to just be me. That's yeah. my problem. Yeah, you <laughs> so. you do. You your your identity is so tied to all of all of your titles. Mom being one of right. them, dependent yeah. being another yes. one. Just like yes. that so much. Yes. Oh my um, gosh. But it's right. so tied to everything that you do and everything that you you know who you are, how you mm-hmm. define yourself. That yeah, you forget sometimes. Forget my own birthday. Like somebody asked me, it's like my birthday and my social security, my social security number. <laughs> right. Do I have one of those anymore. I think it's just my husband now. Oh my gosh. Thing anymore. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not actually a whole person. I'm like, yeah, yeah. His, his dependent. The, <laughs> so that weird. is, yeah, that is the funniest thing. You, I, yeah. I mean, uh, because I, I came into this life at age 40 and I was just like, oh, you don't want my information. You want my husband. Like, and you know, in the military life, it's all about your spouse and yeah. you're under them. And like Marie said, the dependent word is, yeah. hey, what yeah. is it? What, yeah. what is their stuff? Right. You don't all, matter all of sort stuff. of. Yeah. No, you don't feel like you matter. Uh, a yeah. lot of times you don't feel like you matter, but you, you really made your mark, not only in your field, but also in the military community. And I, if I'm not mistaken, you also met your business partner um, in the military community yes. too. So now you have your CPA and your business partner. Yes. It's all like, military related. Yes. All military. And I, you know, I, I, I like to tell people that, wow, I kind of found who I wanted to really be mm-hmm. by becoming 
of being married to my husband and joining this military community, it's something I never would have thought. But I think, you know, he's also in his career, right? He's going to be making 24 years right now. And, and so, and I think that's why you say, oh, we're fine if you don't want to work right now, right? Mm -hmm. Because we could financially could afford that at the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I think that allowed me the time to really say like, what do I, if I, what do I want to do? Yeah. So, um, you know, I did, I just kind of immersed into the community and, um, I've met so many amazing, like yourself, like so many amazing connections and just people in this community. And, um, we, yeah, I was so excited at me and it was here at my, like at Fort hood, Texas, where I am, we met at a party and it was just like, it was literally best friend love at first sight, you know? <laughs> and yeah, we were, we were friends first and then we know we joined forces and we worked really well together. And I just like, she, and she's just my person, you know, like yeah. I, she, and I think with, with, within our community, military spouses, like we forge these friendships like, very oh, yeah. deeply, very quickly, because we don't know how much time we have with them. Right. Right. Never. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it worked out and we're both retiring here in the same space. And our husband's like, okay, these girls are going to be together forever. Right. <laughs> So yeah, I'm super, I'm, I'm so grateful for just kind of the opportunities that I've been given just being in the community and I, just having my eyes open. Right. And just, mm -hmm. and, and seeing those opportunities and not missing them. So, right. um, but yeah, I just adore her and I, she makes me a better person when, when I'm working, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, because like I mentioned earlier, right. When you're running your business, so we both run individual businesses and then we run our, our, our joint business together mm -hmm. and it's just, it can be lonely. And so having, she's literally on my speed dial every single day. If there's not a text message or a FaceTime or a zoom call with her or something, you know, so, um, it's just been great. And I just, I'm so appreciative. Thank you, military. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know every now and then right. every now and then you say thank you to the military for something <laughs> I know I know not not yeah. all the time but yeah. no <laughs> right now and then you're like oh, okay that worked out yes no, yes that, that worked out for the best yeah no no for <laughs> sure for sure it's and it's and it's evolved our business our, you know when you work with somebody you, you you picture yourself just doing this and then you work with another person and they just really open up the mind to like, oh, there's these things we could do, you know? Right. And so it was fantastic. We just actually um, spoke at uh, like a, a big uh, music convention down in San Antonio this year. Oh. Yeah, it had about, I think it said it was like 10,000 attendees and we were able to secure, we, we, we spoke and we actually conducted a workshop just on like, you know, how to use social media for your music education program. And, cool. you know, people signed, people actually showed up to our class. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that yeah. thing like, whoa, okay. So, but you know, it's things like that. I don't know if I would have necessarily done that by myself because I get nervous, but I just having that business partner, having her has been like this like courage juice that I have every day. Like, yeah, we can yeah. do this because I have her. So that's awesome. That yeah. is so yeah. amazing. And you guys, yeah. in addition to having just I don't want to say just the business because the business is like a big part of who you guys are. Like, yeah. you, you, again, kind of redefined yourselves as now business partners. Yeah. Um, but you also, you guys, do you have a podcast too? I know you have, do you have a we YouTube do. channel? Yeah. We, and so what we, else? Yeah. Okay. I know. Right. It's like, and another thing. So yeah. it's so funny. We started a like live stream, uh, show like two years ago, I, I think. And, um, it was just because I needed said on my little things to do list, like you must go do a Facebook live. That's what it said. And so I said to her, Hey, do you want to just come on with me? And like, you know, do a live. Cause I got to, I got to check this off my list this week. <laughs> and it was like, it, we enjoyed it so much that it evolved. So yeah, every week we have a show um, that we live stream out to YouTube and LinkedIn and, and Facebook. And we bring on like some of the, every guest has been phenomenal, but like in a wide range of, we had Miss America 2020 on. Wow. Camille Schreier. She was, and you know, I, you know, you, I, there's those jokes about pageant queens. She mm. was 
the smartest person I have ever met. She's mm-hmm. a farm, like just, it, it was amazing. And you know, people are like, why did you have her on the show? And I'm like, because it's still a business and there's yeah. things that, what are her, her challenges and her tips that she has for what she's done. Right. Mm-hmm. But we've had like a national geographic photographer on, we've had mental health specialists on. It's been so cool to get to connect, but we, you know, we've had it on and, um, we convert our shows into a podcast because, you know, if anybody wants to listen to us, they can. Um, but it's, it's been great. I mean, we just, we do it every week and this month in April, we're crazy. We decided we're going to do a video every day in April challenge. And so we've been, Whoa. yeah, every day today's day 29. And, um, we've had our pre-recorded one going out today because she's flying back from Oregon. But I mean, the last couple of days while she's there, she's been doing her lives with her and her, her daughter-in-law's house, you know, and so cool. Oh my yeah. goodness. Every but, day. That is no, a challenge. It is. It is. But you know what I tell you, the, the opportunities that have come from our videos that we've done every day, it's just, there's this consistency factor in whatever you do, right. That when you right. do something, it just, um, it's something we can only do once a year. Cause I think that's all the bandwidth that we have, <laughs> but it's, it has been so great. And I've, we've connected with a lot of great people. Um, just because of the show, like, Oh, I saw you doing this and you talked about that. And it's just great having the, the offline conversations with them. And yeah. there's a little bit of impact that you're excited about that. Yeah. Just like going on. Would you, would you say that that is what creates the balance, that sort of work-life balance is that so much of what you do is fun? I mean, it, you definitely like created a very big challenge for yourself by saying we're going to, you know, record every day and, you know, post every day. Um, but is that, is that enough? Like, is that enough fun and creativity for you to say that you have work-life balance or like, how do you, how do you define right. that? Or how do you find that? Gosh, I feel like it's so different for everybody, but I, 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 I feel like I don't know how to sit and settle. Mm. So I'm always looking for something that challenges me. So, cause I, I get so scared that I don't want to be complacent in my mm. life, mm-hmm. you know? And so something like this forces me to, um, enter that not complacent, like day to day of our business. And, um, I, just even doing like the live stream, you know, once a week on its own without this video every day, even that, like, you know, that's not a paid gig. It's our passion project that we love right. to do, you know? Right. And like you said, it really, it helps balance that like weight of yeah. the business um, because you can just breathe. And it's, I'm not, I don't know. I guess I don't know. I'm not, you know, you don't worry if the show is going to, not, not bomb. I mean, we work hard at it. We, we loved, but you know what I mean? There's not that pressure. We're not, it's for ourselves and we just love chatting and we love, I think it's our, you know, and we say on the show all the time, it's our water cooler conversation, Mm -hmm. like, right. Because we don't, we work alone. So it's nice for us to meet at the water cooler and be like, what's your boss doing today? Like (laughs) He's so crazy, (laughs) you know? So when you are your own boss, you're like, (laughs) I know, you I know. off the rails today. I don't know if you noticed. Yes, yeah. She's she nuts. has not slid my pay money with her today. <laughs> I know, I know. Those are really fun conversations to have. So definitely, it, it forces you the to balance. Drink her up. coffee this morning or something. I yeah. mean, I'm gonna yes. go buy this woman a latte. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I put mint in. Look, here we go. <laughs> so yeah. It. No. Get yes. It. So no, yeah, absolutely love it. And it was fun. We just had a conversation about it like a, a month ago. I'm like, we still want to do this, right? And we both were like, yes, we love, we just love, we just love talking. We love who we can get to connect with. And you just, you know, so. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I cannot thank you enough for joining me today on Office Hours. Um, this is, this is going to be available on my YouTube channel, the Professor's Kitchen YouTube channel. It's going to be available in the Office Hours podcast, which is, of course, wherever people get their podcasts and everything. I will try to include any links that you would like me to about where people can find you. But my last question, I have one final question for you, and that is, what is next for you? Because I know, again, as a military spouse, when you start talking about retirement, there's so much wrapped up in that word. It's such a big word and it's yeah. such a huge, like, it seems like it can, it can really be like the end of 
you know, it's like the end of an era, right? It's such a big deal. So what, what's next for you in retirement? Yeah. Great question. (laughs) Um, you know, I, uh, I'm a little, I was, I'm a little nervous in the sense of like, do I get to still be part of this wonderful community that has Mm -hmm. given me so much? Like that's really been my biggest panic, but I know that it is. And there's opportunities that are coming. I think it's just really building, building, um, uh, my goal is to see how I can help bridge that like retired military spouse bridge to feeling that they are, they still matter. They're still part of a community that like loves and appreciates and wants to support them. Yeah. So um, I think for me, I, you know, as my, my husband and I, he's going to be retiring this year and just looking into that. Um, I'm happy and excited for him, but I think, yeah, on the horizon is a uh, kind of a way to, to, to help the military spouses that are in the retired sector of life. Um, yeah. Cause I think there's a lot, there's a lot and bless because they deserve it for our veterans. Right. Um, but not as much for the spouses, like, you know, mm-hmm. they, they've also been part of that life. And so right. um, I kind of want to just, I don't know, that's like something I want to just provide something, a space or something like that to, to, just say, Hey, you matter still, if you were hiding in the shadows, thinking that because you're out, you're out come on in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. I yeah. cannot wait to see what you do next. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. I'm going to continue following your journey <gasps> into retirement. You. That is so amazing. But just the idea, like I've already, we're not even, I mean, we're like barely halfway to retirement at this point. And I'm already like, I, I don't, I, I know what I want to yes. do. It's constantly an evolving thing, um, but and I won't be anywhere near retirement when he <laughs> retires. Right, but right. you know, um, but I'm guessing it's probably the same for you. You're like, yes, well, I'm not gonna quit working. Right. Like, yeah, I'm like, yes, I'm like, no, yeah, I, I still have things to do. And yes, I'm still young and vibrant. Yes, I totally. <laughs> you get it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. But um, I, I wish you, I wish you well in oh, in retirement. Thank I hope you. you get everything that you want accomplished in yeah. retirement as well. Cause I don't think, uh, I don't think it's an end. No. I, I, yeah. agree. I think that more people need to realize that it's, it's not the end and you still yeah. have so much more to, to offer so much experience too, Ooh. that you can offer. I would yeah. love to see more of that, like <gasps> mentorship yes. and stuff yes. of younger spouses. Cause it's, yes. like you said, it's lonely, it's hard. Mm-hmm. And you're just, you're constantly like, looking forward to retirement so that it can all be over. But then at the same time, I can't imagine like getting there and just being like, okay, okay. I wish for this thing. And now what, (laughs) now what, now what, now what I do? Yeah. Right. Why did I say that? I I know. What do I do now? (laughs) Thank you so much for having me on. You are an amazing host and just a wonderful person to speak with. I'm like, I'm so glad for today's conversation with you. I am so glad that you agreed to chat with me today. Thank you so much.